Welcome to our Photoshop tutorial for beginners. We created this video because we wanted new Photoshop users to feel comfortable and confident using the Photoshop interface. Let's get started. You have a few options when opening up Photoshop. You can select one of your most recent documents created within Photoshop. You can also open up another document within your computer, or you can select new to create a new customizable template. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna select new. This will bring up a new window which your most recent templates used along this area here. You also have the option to create a customized template. That's what we'll do. Along, along the top is where you'll place your file name. So we're gonna name this new template. You have an option to select the width, height, orientation, resolution, color, and how you would like to start your template with a white background, a black background, a background color. You also have options to choose transparent, which will be no color, but you'll still have the option to fill a color in. But we're gonna go with white because I like working and starting my documents with a white background. I'll click create. There you go, you've created your document within Photoshop. Now let's have some fun. The first thing I wanna do is add some text to this document. So what I wanna do is locate my type tool within my toolbar. I have my toolbar set up along the right side of the interface, and here is my type tool. So I'll select that, and to begin typing, just click anywhere within the document. We're gonna type Photoshop Fun. To let Photoshop know that you're done typing for the moment, just select this check mark at the very top. Now you see in your layers panel, you have your text layer and your background layer. We want to move this text layer to the center. So what we're going to do is in our toolbar, locate the move tool at the very top. Select the move tool, make sure you have your layer, your text layer selected. Click and drag to the center. Next thing I want to do is add a red box behind this uh, text layer. So in my layers panel, I'll create a new layer by selecting this icon at the very, at the, <laughs> at the very, very bottom, at the very bottom of your layers panel. I'll select that. It gave me a new layer right above my text layer, but I want my red box to appear behind my text layer. So I'll drag this new layer below my text layer. Let's name this layer red box. There we go. Now to create my box, I want to select my marquee tool right below my move tool. So I have my marquee tool selected and I am certain that I am on my red box layer. To create your box, click and drag, hold shift to maintain proportions, and let go of your mouse. Now I would like to fill my marquee selection with the color red. So to do this, what we're going to do is go into our toolbar, locate our toolbar, and see our color picker down here at the very bottom? This will set the foreground color. So we're going to click in there. And I want to fill my marquee selection with the color red. So I will scroll all the way up to the top of my color bar and then choose the color red here and then click OK. Now that we have our foreground color set to the color red, what we'll do is on your keyboard, press Alt and Backspace. And that'll fill in whatever selection you have your marquee selection with whatever color you have set on your foreground. We want to get rid of our marching ants marquee. We'll press Control D and now we have our red box behind our Photoshop fun text layer. The next thing we're going to do is edit our box because I want it to fill, fit perfectly behind the uh, Photoshop fun text. So to do this, we're going to press Control T on our keyboard and we're going to stretch this out. Just click and drag over to the right. 
when you're done with editing your box, you can press the check mark at the very top. Now I want to add some effects to our box. To do this is very simple. There's an effects button at the very bottom of your layers panel. We can click in there and it'll give us a drop down menu. I want to add a drop shadow. So I'm going to click in drop shadow and this will bring up our layer styles menu. This is where we add our effects. Along the left side, you can see a check mark right by the drop shadow option. That's because whatever option we have selected on the left side, it, these, these on the right side would be the settings for this particular menu. So to see what we're doing here, I'm going to move my menu over to the right a little bit. And now we can see how the effects of the drop shadow. So you see that'll be your drop shadow. It'll create the same shape. And the reason why you see it black here is because I have the opacity at 100. I can lower my opacity. You see the box disappears or raise my opacity and it's a solid black color because I have it on black here. You see our blend mode is set to multiply. The reason why we leave it on multiply is because if you have a background behind your uh, drop shadow or whatever layer you're working with, we don't want it to, to be a solid color. We want it to have the effect of a shadow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower our distance to bring it back so that we can create that shadow effect. So I'll bring it right over here. I have it set to multiply. I'm gonna leave the opacity at 100 right now, but to create the shadow effect, you have multiple options. You can uh, increase your spread, you can increase your size. As you can see, that'll give you that shadow effect. You see the blur on the box now. So I like, I like it something like that, but we're gonna lower this a little bit. There you go. When you're done editing your shadow to your particular preference, you can click OK. And there you go. Now you have a shadow behind your red box. I don't want my text to be in this font format, and I also want my text to be white. To do this, we'll click on our text layer. And in our character panel that you can see right here, if you don't have this as an option, available for you, you can always go into the Windows menu and select character. When you select character, your tab will pop up. As you see, I just checked it off. So we're going to go back in and check it again. Character panel. Now I have my character panel available. To change my text, you simply just go into the drop down menu of your character panel and you can change your text to whatever style text you like. We're gonna go with a bold font. So let's see if we can find a bold font. You got next to bold. Let's go with next to bold. That's actually a, a custom font. And if you go to the font, D-A-F-A-F-O, excuse me, N-T, you'd be able to download many fonts, thefont.com. Here we can edit our, in our character panel, we can edit our text. So I just selected the next bold font, which changed my text. Now I would like to change the color of my text. So I'll, ch I'll select color, click once, and I want to make this a white color. So I'll just click up here, and now I have white available, and click OK. As you can see, our text has turned to the color white. Now I want to add a pattern to my background color to really make this pop out a bit. So to do this, what we'll do is select the background layer, go into your effects menu, and select pattern overlay. Here you have an option to choose multiple patterns to overlay whatever option that's selected. So we'll click our pattern, and here you have multiple options. If you need another set of options, you could always click this little uh, cog icon and you can load up 
multiple preset patterns. So we're gonna select one of the patterns that we have available and let's scroll through them. You could also change the size and the style of the pattern. We have a blend mode, dark is on 100, and if we wanna make it a bigger pattern, as you can see on our document, it's uh, increasing the size of our pattern here. Let's make it like this. It looks something like a, a, a marble wall. So now that we have our pattern selected, in your layer style menu, you can simply select multiple options. You have an option to add a bevel to your pattern or background, a contour, a stroke, inner shadow. Um, your, you can add a glow. You can add satin color overlay, gradient overlay. You can add an outer glow and you can also put a drop shadow on your background. What we're going to do is add a color overlay. So the next option I would like to select is color overlay. As you can see, it filled. We no longer see our pattern. But I want what I want is to change the color of the pattern that I had. To do that, as long as you're in the color overlay menu, you select the color of your choice. We're going to go with a turquoise type of color select OK and your blend mode will allow you to see what's behind this solid color so we're gonna change our blend mode to multiply and as you can see we laid this color overlay on our pattern so now our pattern is visible with this turquoise tint overlaid on top of the pattern. Now I would like to add some additional effects to our background layer. To do this, we need to let Photoshop know that we want to add these layer styles to our background. You can see that our thumbnail shows a white background with some effects that are overlaid onto this layer. But I want my layer styles finalized. So to finalize your layer style, you'll right click and select rasterize layer. Now as you can see your layer styles have disappeared and now you're working with this background. To add a blur to your background, adding a blur will create a sense of depth of field. So I'll go into my filter menu at the very top Hover over blur to bring up the menu of options for the blur and we'll select Gaussian blur. This will blur our background a bit. You also have an option to increase or decrease the radius. As you can see if I increase it blurs our background. If I lower it it'll bring our background back to its original state. So I'm going to go with around 6 radius because I think that's pretty good for this uh, document. Click OK when you're done with your settings. And now we have this as our document with Photoshop one at the very front, forefront and our blurred background layer. Now I would like to add an inner shadow because I want our audience to view Photoshop fun. I want them to focus in on Photoshop fun. So to create that effect, what you'll do is add an inner shadow, sort of like a vignette around our, uh, our background. So I'll go into effects again and add an inner shadow. You have multiple options here. You're, we're in our layer style, styles menu. I want to leave this on multiply and the color on black because I want it to be dark around the edges because we're going to create a vignette. Let's just work with our sliders here and see what we get. I'm going to add some distance. As you can see, that's what we have here. So let's move our... The choke 
is you see and you can see like a solid line here I don't want to see a solid line because that's not a realistic shadow so I want to lower my choke and as you can see now we have more of a shadow effect around our document you can increase the size and increase the distance but we're gonna leave it like that I I think I like it like that if you raise your opacity as you can see it'll get darker but we had it around 30 or 35 let's leave it around there and when I'm done editing my shadow to my preference I'll click OK if I wanted to crop my image and bring it down a bit because I know I don't need this additional background there's just too much space and our audience will not focus in on Photoshop fun because there's so much space in the background so to crop my image I'll select the crop tool which is the fifth icon from the top and simply click and drag when you're done with your edit click enter as you can see our shadow has been adjusted because we cropped the image so now we need to go back into inner shadow to get back in you'll simply double click the effect that's under your layer so I'll double click on inner shadow and I want to edit these settings because when I had the larger background it worked well but when I cropped out the image as you can see the shadow readjusted according to the size of my background so we're gonna lower the distance a bit there we go and the size could probably be lowered also there you go I think that's a much better effect when you're done with your settings simply click OK the next thing I want to do is add a bit of a bevel to our, our red box so that we can make sure it pops out a bit more so we'll go into our red box and select our effects at the very bottom of the layers panel and we're gonna go into bevel and emboss you can increase the depth of your bevel which you can see it'll make it pop out a bit more you can increase the size of your bevel as you can see it'll create some of a button effect like what you see on the internet like a web button and you can increase the smoothness of your bevel I think that works out well but it seems a little uneven from what I've noticed you have Photoshop fun and as you can see the distance between the last letter and the end of our red box is a bit shorter on this side than it is on this side and that's because your red box and your text layer have not been centered properly so we want to make sure that it fits perfectly in the center and to do that we'll press control a as an apple to make a complete selection of the entire document this just tells Photoshop like I want to work within this space so now I let Photoshop know that I'm what space I'm working within and I'll select both of the layers that I would like moved into the center which is my red box layer and my Photoshop layer now that you have those layers selected you want to make sure that you have your move tool selected in your toolbar and when you select your move tool now you have your alignment options available at the very top and if you hover over each one it'll tell you exactly what it is align to the top of the edges align vertical sensors which means it'll make sure that your layers that are selected will line up perfectly in the center from top to bottom that's align vertical sensors align bottom edges align to the left edge or align horizontal sensors and align right edges but we're gonna align horizontal sensors because I just want my text to fit perfectly within the box 
and make sure that both of these layers are set perfectly in the center of my document. You simply just need to click align horizontal centers, which is this little icon right here. And now we have a perfect distance between the first letter and the left side of the box and the last letter and the right side of the box. To get rid of my marching and selection, I'll simply press, press Control D. And now you've created your first design within Photoshop. We hope you had fun and we hope you developed a better understanding on how to use the Photoshop interface and some of its features. Uh, we would love to continue creating additional tutorials to add to our new YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to click on the subscribe button and mash that like button. We would greatly appreciate it and we hope you continue to have fun with Photoshop.